It's so good to be home. I'm here to add yet another chapter to the degreed story. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of the chapters so far and what we are about to do next. So take you back all the way to where it started. 2002 is the year that I graduated from high school. So go back in time with me a little bit. My email address is dblakelovesoccer at yahoo.com. None of us have Gmail yet. 2002 was the year that I had my first iPod, but I do not yet own a cell phone. I am a elder millennial. The timeline checks out. And 2002, so graduating high school, Earlier that year, I would sit for the ACT. And that really is the spark, the catalyst. Those who know me know my story, know that this is where it all started. I sat for the ACT at American Fork High School on a Saturday morning, looked around and thought, you can't be real. This isn't seriously how we're sorting all the 17-year-olds in and out of their futures. And it's 2002. I was perturbed enough and this is important to the story, when I asked, why do we do it this way, I didn't go to Google. It did exist in 2002. But to take you back, I actually went and spoke to my high school guidance counselor for the first time to ask them if they knew why we did it this way. And they didn't. They knew the importance, of course, of the ACT and the, uh, and the, the SAT and the ACT, but they didn't know its history. So to take you back to 2002, when they couldn't answer the question for me, I actually went to the library. Just old enough, 2002, to put it back in context. As a 17-year-old, my instinct, I mean, one, I would have gone to Yahoo, not Google yet, is the honest truth, in 2002. And that wasn't the instinct as to where I would get my questions answered. I went to the library, tried to find some books on high-stakes testing, couldn't find any, but did check out some books on the history of the education system. And the realization that would set me off on this course, graduating 2002 towards the top of my class, an excellent student, I realized those books were the first thing that I checked out at the library, the first thing I'd ever studied that a teacher hadn't assigned to me. As I started to realize that the education is a system and I was a product of the system, I didn't really like what it had turned me into, which was a good memorizer and a good test taker. And I realized in that moment that I had managed to become an excellent student while failing to become a good learner. And I committed to myself that I would become a good lifelong learner, even if it came at the expense of being a good student. And that is what would set us off on this journey. So, 10 years later, 2012. I'm 28 at the time. I was married with two kids, got an early uh, jump start on that. Now in 2002, to fast forward, that is the year that the Encyclopedia Britannica stopped issuing print edition. So just in those 10 years, in 2002, when I needed to learn something, Knowledge was scarce and inaccessible. I literally had to go to an, the only expert that resided in my physical space, which was my high school guidance counselor, and a library where the physical books were being stored. By 2012, we no longer have encyclopedias. A massive major shift happened in that time. By 2012, I had my first iPhone. Um, and as we look at this first shift, this is the first wave that DeGreed was born um, on the back of. And that is this Cambrian explosion of education and information. This was a radical shift never before experienced in the history of humanity, where information and education used to be inaccessible and scarce, Therefore, we had to centralize it. In libraries, and universities, in schools, in the HR and L&D departments, 
When we needed to learn something, we had to go somewhere. We had to knock on someone's door. By 2012, the lines had crossed. Content learning, it had democratized. It had exploded. This is Khan Academy and Code Academy. This was Pluralsight and Udemy and Lynda.com. This was the MOOCs and Coursera and Udacity and edX. 2011 was the year of the MOOCs. By 2012, now, all of a sudden, education and information was abundant and accessible. And that opened the floodgates to a reality of accessible lifelong learning. And Agreed met this moment. My passion, my ambition was to create a system of lifelong learning where all learning mattered and where we could have transparency to everything that you learned, that we could transact on your education and skills, that they could be codified and knowable. The mission of Degreed, we said, was to jailbreak the college degree, to make lifelong learning the norm, and to make it so that we could transact on all education and all skills. In this Cambrian explosion of content, all of a sudden, there are many providers. There are many modalities, articles, videos, books, podcasts, YouTube, courses. And in this moment, enterprise organizations were left with a radical shift that they couldn't get their arms around, that they were generally inaccessible um, to these major consumer shifts and trends. The LMS wasn't built to help enterprise organizations manage all of this consumer-driven lifelong learning. So the Degreed platform was able to help follow learners across their learning journey, across the many platforms and providers. And as we moved into enterprise organizations, we helped enterprise organizations to meet that moment. The content had exploded. It was confusing. It was a fractured ecosystem. How are we going to deal with it? The Degreed platform help enterprise organizations to meet that moment. Now fast forward a decade later, 2022. So founded Degreed in 2012. Married two kids by 2022, married three kids, they're getting older. I led Degree to CEO for six and a half years. I handed over the reins to Chris McCarthy. Where is he at? I hope he's in here. There he is. A lot happened inside those 10 years. Degree birthed the LXP. It would become a category that defined the last decade of lifelong learning and corporate L&D. Chris would uh, succeed me and lead Degreed through the back half of that um, 10 years. I stepped away to do political organizing, was busy after that, created a venture studio called the Future of Work Studios. We launched two businesses. One is called Learn In, one is called Book Club, which you can check out at the uh, booth outside. Eric Sharp and I um, would co-found Book Club. Chris would lead um, Degreed and has since gone on to now is leading Skillable. Kat, who many of you know, has gone on to become a venture capitalist. And in the meantime, all of you are busy. The market has been maturing from lifelong learning into deeper upskilling. But in 2022, another line, set of lines crossed that brings us to another radical shift. And that is that the rate that technology is scaling has now outpaced the rate at which humanity can learn. If you look at ChatGPT, it reached a million users faster than anything in the history of ever. If you look at those charts, it is incredible how fast the world is changing. Technology can now scale faster than humanity can learn. What that means is we have entered a new era in humanity, in which the skills gap is getting bigger every day, week, month, year, and we have no expectation that it will ever close ever again. Don't ever let anyone use the term the fourth industrial revolution. It's a misnomer 
That is when technology advanced in front of humanity and humanity caught up. That's not what we are talking about. The rate at which technology can scale has now outpaced the rate at which humanity can learn. That means we exist in a world where skills are ever more scarce. The skills gap is growing. So we have all been responding to that pressure. We are starting to see a shift to skills-based hiring, skills-based performance management. We're seeing skills-based coaching. We're starting to see, once again, a Cambrian explosion. But this time, it's not in learning content, but in skills data. Just as content exploded a decade ago, now skills data has exploded. And enterprise organizations are frustrated with this fractured ecosystem of disparate point solutions that all use a different taxonomy and language and level for all of that skills data. Just like a decade ago, the articles, videos, books, podcasts from many providers, there was no cohesive way of bringing it together. Well, now that is true of the skills data and the many solutions out there. So, to add to the next chapter of the Degreed story, what Degreed did for content a decade ago, Degreed will now do for skills data. In building the layer that will sit on top of the entire ecosystem, all of the HCM, LMS, LXP, performance, talent, hiring, mobility, all of them. We will sit on top of it so that we can bring all of it collectively to one place, normalize it, and make it comprehensive and useful to you, just like we did a decade ago with content. This marks the shift to skills-based organizations. Bill Gates popularized, I don't know if uh, uh, it's attributed to him, but popularized the quote, we tend to underestimate, we tend to overestimate what we can do in a year, and we tend to underestimate what we can do in a decade. Taking you back to 2012, we had just stopped printing Encyclopedia Britannicas. Here we are a decade later. Now as you think about a decade ahead, I promise you that we cannot yet even fathom what it is going to mean to be a skills-based organization, how dramatically this is going to shift and shape the world. Think about it today. Right now, we get paid generally on our title and our geography. Ten years from now, that is going to seem so archaic. Why with me, with all of my skills, if I upskill myself and have twice the skills of someone else in the same job title, should we ever be getting paid the same thing? Ten years from now, you won't get paid based on your job role, your job title, or your geography. You will get paid based on each and every skill at every skill level. Ten years from now, I promise you, it will be more dramatic than we can ever even imagine in this moment, what it will mean to be a skills-based organization. Let's play this through really fast. McKinsey came out with research about two months ago that compares recruiting based on academic credentials versus hiring based on experience. Now, experience-based hiring is almost, but not quite, twice as effective as hiring based on academic credentials. But get this, skills-based hiring is 3.5x more effective than hiring based on academic credentials. To no one's surprise, I hope. But it is twice as effective as hiring based on work experience. Double, twice as effective. Skills-based hiring is the most effective way that humanity has ever invented to recruit and hire someone. If you play that out, an average attrition rate, an average growth rate for companies 
If you were to start your skills-based hiring today versus a company that doesn't, that will start to compound just five years from now. Your organization will be almost twice as effective as those who enter five years from now. There will be winners, there will be losers in this future. The future is going to be data-driven. Data is going to begin to drive how we develop our people, how we hire, and our performance management. There will be winners and the losers. I want to highlight Ericsson, who has already mobilized this. Vidya, Peter, they were tasked with upskilling their organization in their five top company critical skills. So 5G, AI, automation, sales, and collaboration. And using the data, using Degree, they were able to mobilize their organization and to upskill 14% more people. That translates to 15,000 people inside of their organization against their five key critical skills. When you think about how that compounds, organizations that get good at this versus organizations that don't, there will be winners and there will be losers. As you look to the future, you're going to have to orchestrate not just the learning, not just the in-the-flow of work learning, but increasingly also the deep upskilling, the fundamental radical upskilling of your employees. What is the difference? I can go online and watch a, a YouTube video from the world's best marathon runners on how to become a marathon runner. I can learn from the world's best, but that does not make me a marathon runner. I can learn, but that doesn't actually give me the skills. Upskilling is the journey of becoming a marathon runner. You are increasingly going to be responsible for both learning and upskilling. It's also important to note, this is hella expensive. On average, it takes, uh, the World Economic Forum puts it at 24,800 US dollars as the average cost to upskill one employee. Josh Burson puts it around 15,000. Take your pick. But either way, both of those numbers are bigger than the average of the $1,500 per employee that the average L&D budget is. Upskilling is expensive. Increasingly, we're going to have to get good at the access, democratizing this, managing our education benefits, tuition reimbursement, and mobilizing that against our upskilling. You've got a lot in front of you. If you don't get the data on all of your skills across all of your systems, you're going to be flying blind. What this requires is that we're able to first collect and then gain intelligence so that we can act on all of this skills data. In the future, we are going to have to make this skills data the heart of our work, the beating heart. So in 2023, four degree, this is the year of the experience data. Four years ago on this stage, I said the LXP was requisite but not sufficient. Degree to this point has really been pioneering that category. As we look to this decade, it's really going to be about now the lifelong learning plus the experience data that we are able to generate. The experience data, it comes from every learning experience in real time. All of these systems, not just Degree, not just the LXP, but all of those point solutions that are starting to generate learning data as well as skills data. And we are committed to being the pioneer and your innovation partner in bringing these things together. The lifelong learning, how does it meet that data-driven development? Here is our framework for the next chapter of Degreed. So, you know Degreed as your LXP. The additional features of the last several years, we have put those together as the LXP Plus, and we will continue to innovate on the LXP. Behind that, we are beginning to pick up in earnest exploration, the needs of the deskless worker, and how do we make sure that we are your partner that can meet the needs of every employee's learning. But again, as we move to the future, it's not just about learning. We are also having to pick up the harder task of actually upskilling 
and developing our people's skills. Against that, DeGreed brought LearnIn into the fold, who has been pioneering work on corporate academies and educational benefits. Further, we are partnering our way with the best coaching platforms to be able to bring your coaches into the ecosystem. Behind that, we have the data-driven development. As we continue to get this experience data on skills, what does this enable as you think about your future? So by the end of the year, we're already in beta with some of our early partners around benchmarking, being able to see what are the benchmarks for the skills that other organizations, other teams, other people um, in the same industries or category have. Already Live is our skills intelligence suite that can give you the next level intelligence on the skills of everyone inside of your organization. And we are investing ourselves against building from the ground up that new layer that will sit on top of all of the HCM point solutions, learning solutions, that can bring all of that skills data together and normalize it so that all of your systems can talk together and have the same language of skills. And finally, in this last year, we introduced our consulting and implementation practices that many of you are already using and familiar with. So the learning suite, we really are excited and committed to making sure that we continue to be the most innovative platform for the lifelong learning, for learning in the flow of work, for your making sure that your um, organization is agile and employee-centric, and increasingly that we can meet the needs of every learner inside of your organization. Development, the deeper skill building, the skills platform. I'll pause here for just one moment to say, going back to 2002, 2001 was the year that Steve Jobs got on stage and pulled an iPod out of his pocket and talked about a million songs in your pocket. This is going to be the decade that you will pull out your phone and be able to see the millions of skills that are inside of your organization. And that is what this is about, being able to have the data to be able to ski, see and action the skills of your organization. Finally, I'd like to introduce Call to Action, anyone here? We have committed ourselves to this next decade, to being able to finally codify and transact on all of everyone's learning and skills. But we've also been listening, I've been meeting with many of you, I've been meeting with many of you around the world in person, and know that after 10 years, the degreed UX is in need of a little bit of an update. So I would invite any of you who are interested in working on the degreed UX to join our UX research lab. We are already underway in testing, doing user research around the UX for the degreed platform. I'm so excited to be back at DeGreed, to be working on this mission, to jailbreak the degree, to build this future of lifelong learning where all education counts and where we can, can transact on all of our education and skills. I'm so grateful to all of you. That's it for now. Thanks so much.